I mean, just thinking about that day, I'm like, wow, what a horrible day. <laughs> Hi, my name is Diana. I am a sous chef at a luxury hotel restaurant and I've been doing this for eight years now. Hi, my name is Yoli. I'm a chef de cuisine and I've been working in this industry for about 15 years. So I was working at a it was a Michelin star restaurant, so already you go in there and you're very, you feel a lot of pressure, very stressed out. I was trying to finish all my prep before dinner service started, and you're, on, you're by yourself in your own station, so you have a lot of stuff to do in a limited amount of time, and you can, do not have time to mess anything up. So I believe I was slicing lemons, very thinly sliced lemons, when I just got a little bit distracted and I sliced a piece of my finger off. It was a, a good size. I would say it was like the tip of it, maybe like the size of the top of the fingertip. I was able to see some of the actual meat in my finger. It didn't hurt because the blade was just very sharp. Plus the initial shock of a piece of your finger being on the table. I was very upset because I had to throw away my prep, clean everything. It was just like a waste of time. But then I was trying to think of how I can salvage some time and that part of my finger that was on the ground, well, on the table. And I needed to figure all of this out very quickly because I didn't want to waste any more time. I picked up the little piece of finger that was on the table and I just try to stop the bleeding. I put some spray that coagulates your blood and it, it stopped it pretty quickly. I didn't want to lose that piece of finger. It was very important to me. So I figured, hey, we use this thing. It's like meat glue that we use here where we roll some stuff in bacon, throw a little bit of meat glue and it like seals perfectly. So I'm made of meat. So I decided to sprinkle the meat glue on my finger and just pretend like nothing ever happened put a big old band-aid and a glove, and I changed it throughout service, and I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want anyone to send me home. I just, it's a very stressful situation when you're under pressure like that. So I worked the entire service while I was bleeding, while I was trying to glue a piece of my finger back together. When I went home, it looked very gross, but I, I kept sprinkling that glue on my finger, and amazingly, it worked, it glued together, which is weird, and I know it's unbelievable, but it worked, it healed. I'm a huge advocate for meat glue now. Dine LA, <laughs> it is the worst thing that we need to go through, especially when your chef is very ambitious and wants to have a full menu going and a sample menu. And so we're really busy, and it's the second night of service, and I'm on pasta for the first time and I'm trying to make a farro, which is for a farro risotto dish, and I make it, and there's like an hour left before service starts, and I try it, and immediately all I taste is salt, and so I'm like, what the, who touched my risotto? So I'm freaking out, but I don't have time for it because we have like 200 on the books to start, so I throw it away, and I start it again, like hoping that the chef doesn't notice that it's not ready yet, and I make it and I'm done and I try it again and I didn't put any salt in it and again I'm like what is going on this just tastes like pure salt. So now I have no time and I'm like rushing I'm hoping that no one gets that order until I finish it again but I'm like let me try everything and so I try it all separate and then I realized that the veg stock was actually not labeled it was like the old sticker on it and it wasn't veg stock it was chicken brine which if you know that's like just pure liquid salt. So I was like, God And I start all over again. And once I'm done and my line is set up, tickets start coming in, all these modifications because everyone is super cheap during Dine LA, trying to split everything, but it's true. Um, and so I get it like going, I have like a good rhythm with me and I get a ticket that is no sauce, no salt, no butter, nothing, just like plain noodles. And I'm like, this is weird, but whatever. So I do it and I finish it. And right when I'm about to plate it, they tell me to, they bring a dog bowl. And I'm like, freaking 
rich people, of course I'm feeding your dog right now. So I played it, I put it up, five minutes later I see the dog bowl coming back and I'm like, the dog loves my stuff, probably gonna be this dog's private chef one day. And no, I actually have to remake its food all over again because I insulted the dog by putting it in a dog bowl. So while I'm trying to catch up with my tickets, I have to also remake this pasta for a dog and plate it on our expensive plates so that it can be an accurate presentation. I mean, I think the dog was a happy customer at the end of it. Um, it doesn't really matter the other end of it, like who's eating what, or even if it is a person at the end of it, it just enjoy making the food. So it's always worth it and it's just like test your patience constantly. So I was working at a restaurant uh, many years ago and it was very busy and it was during Dine LA and Dine LA is already a nightmare within itself. From opening to when you close, it's non-stop people coming and going. So you have to work in the kitchen like a while oiled machine. One minor setback can throw off service and lag ticket times. And we had just a little minor bump in the road. So it's, I would say it was about 8.30 or 9, right when it's like prime time. Everyone is like focused and we're just in the back cooking, expediting, sending out the tickets. When a server comes back and he looks very scared, he also looks a little bit wet. And then another server comes back who also looks scared and also looks a little bit wet. And then we find out that somebody had put the big like heating, outdoor heating things, and they put them too close to a fire extinguisher thing and it sprayed the entire patio, which was about five or six tables. We lost about 20 dishes of food. All of the people that were sitting outside had to be reseated in the dining room. We had to remake the food for them while trying to continue to make the food for the people that were not affected by it. It, it was very stressful. I would have cried, but I was just too busy. <laughs> just, it, was, it, was, it was bad. It was an accomplishment and we were all really happy at the end, high-fiving each other, you know, no one died of like stress or panic, so it was good. So it is my first time in a fine dining professional kitchen. The chef is always on me, constantly, like to better me, always on my ass basically. And so he comes up to me and is like, I'm gonna be on you like white on rice all day, end of service, you're gonna go feeling like a badass, but during the process, I'm going to break you and I'm like, Cool, can't wait. But I had just gotten out of a relationship, not my choice, but I had to show up to work because you can't call off. And every time he came up to me, I was like, don't cry, don't cry. And at the end of it, like I just started crying and I ran out, but can't escape a busy kitchen. So he finds me and he's like, you're gonna go back in there. You're gonna cut onions, all of service. And that's what I had to do. So I'm in the back, like a sad little puppy, just chopping away pickled onions, 25 pound case. I did feel like very empowered after all of it, but it was a lot of tears. My eyes were definitely burning. That experience and that night of cutting 25 pounds of red onions molded me into the thick skin person I am. And now I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you're gonna cry in this kitchen, you're gonna grab an onion and you're gonna start slicing and you're gonna get some thick skin. So I appreciate it at the end, not at the moment. So even through all of these horrible events that happen in the kitchen, I still love what I do. It's definitely not for people who want a nine to five, like easy going job. Like every day you go into work and you're like, what is gonna happen today? So you have to love that sense of excitement. You do have to have a lot of passion and I think I, I do. And all the chefs I've worked for have been mentors sadistic mentors for sure, but they have like molded me and I respect them all. There's a lot of sacrifices. You sacrifice your personal life, family time, you work every weekend, you have scars from burning, but at the end of the day, if you, this is your passion, then it's completely worth it. Mm -hmm.